Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video as we continue with our Praetor week. Today it's time for Ourobrask Heretic Praetor in Explorer, a 5 mana 4 4 with haste, saying at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library and you may play it this turn. That also includes lands, so it can provide a ton of extra card advantage. And at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, the next time they would draw a card this turn, instead they exile the top card of their library and they may play it this turn. So that essentially replaces their draw step. So we're hoping the opponent exiles a spell with Orbrask because they may not actually want to cast that spell right away and if they don't it goes to waste because it stays in exile and you can think of plenty of examples like maybe a removal spell that doesn't have a great target or a counter spell that they cannot cast yet and sometimes it will also just throw off their curve if they were planning to cast something else so Orbrask can seriously mess up the opponent's draw steps but the two card combo we're actually trying to establish is Orbrask alongside Draneth Magistrate 2 mana 1-3 your opponents cannot cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Originally meant as a way to stop the companions from Ikoria, but of course those have changed over time so it doesn't really work as intended anymore, but still a very nice way to prevent the opponent from casting any spells from exile, and that's exactly where the spells will go with Orbrask. So the dream case scenario is we have Magistrate and Orbrask in play, the opponent is empty-handed so there's no more surprises, and we've got the board under control, because now if the opponent goes to draw, they won't be able to cast any more spells for the rest of the game, so we've essentially locked the opponent out of the game, so that's the prison element of this deck. And then the Magistrate still has a few use cases outside of the combo, it can prevent the opponent from casting spells out of the Adventure Zone, if they for instance cast a Stomp from Bonecrusher Giant, now they won't be able to cast a 4-3 creature afterwards, because that's not their hand, they also won't be able to flash back any spells, so it also stops those, so the Magistrate's actually not bad, even without the Orbrass combo and it also combines very nicely with elite spellbinder so we can curve Manchester into spellbinder spellbinder takes a look at the opponent's hand and we can exile a non-land card to make it too more expensive but if we control Manchester they won't even be able to cast that card at an increased cost because it's not from their hand so that's another great two card combo and spellbinder also just a serviceable card outside of the combo and looking at the rest of our deck, it's kind of your typical red-white mid-range deck with lots of interaction and just good quality cards, including Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which starts out making a Shaman token, which can make treasure tokens when it attacks. And then the second chapter, also very helpful in assembling our two-card combo, as we can discard up to two cards and then draw that many. Can maybe also get rid of an extra Magistrate that we no longer need, as it can be a bit of a low-impact card otherwise. And then eventually the Reflection of Kiki Jiki also has a few great combos in this deck, like copying our Spellbinder to exile more cards from the opponent's hand, and copying a Skyclave Apparition to exile an opposing a non-land, non-token permanent with mana value 4 or less. Even if it does leave behind an Illusion token, we can usually manage those. And then a Bonecrusher Giant, also a nice value card, dealing to damage first and then a 4-3 creature. And of course Magistrate is one-sided, so it doesn't stop us from casting the Bonecrusher. Then we've got Chandra to deal 4 damage with a minus 3, can make more mana or provide extra card advantage or damage. And then we've got Sarah Paragon, a new addition from Dominaria United, a 3-4 flyer that once each turn lets us replay a permanent with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard. And then if it leaves the battlefield it gets exiled and we gain 2 life. And it's especially powerful alongside Selfless Savior, the 1-1 one -one that can be sacrificed at any point to give one of our creatures indestructible until end of turn. So that can help protect either Manchester or Urban and then once we sacrifice it we just bring it back for one mana with Sarah Paragon and it can be used a second time and then the Paragon can get back any of our other three mana cards here including Fable of the Mirror Breaker even Bonecrusher Giant and can get back a Manchester as well maybe even some lands we discarded with Fable of the Mirror Breaker and then we've got two copies of Showdown of the Skulls as another nice grindy card, especially in those mid-range matchups like Rakdos, can exile the top four cards of our library that we can play until the end of our next turn and potentially pick up some plus one plus one counters, so you usually want to wait until as late in the game as possible to cast it so we can get maximum value out of it. And then we also have four copies of a Braid as our two-mana removal spell of choice, as it's an instant that can deal three damage to a creature, so perfect for taking out opposing copies of Greasefang, and it can also destroy an artifact, so 
okay, maybe take out a Chariot or a Parhelion if it ever does get to that point. If you're really worried about a Grease Fang matchup, you can always add more copies of Unlicensed Hearse as a great tool to exile the opponent's graveyard. And then our mana base has a few goodies with Iganjo and Crucible, as well as two copies of Den of the Bugbear as a creature land that we can maybe also get back with Paragon. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got our two combo pieces in hand. We'll need a couple more lands, but Fable can help, so we'll give it a shot. Opponents on a Grease Fang reanimator deck. So having the Abrade to kill Grease Fang at instant speed is important. For now, play Manchester. It. And then hopefully pick up a land for Fable. There's no Parhelion in the graveyard yet, so we don't necessarily need to keep up a braid for a turn 3 Grease Fang. Now a Grizzly Salvage, milling an Asika's Chariot, finding Grease Fang. Alright, so now I'll have to keep up a braid, which I guess I'm forced to anyway. And we'll see if they go for it. Okay, so before it gets a chance to trigger, kill Grease Fang and hope they don't have a way to get it back. Alright, time for Fable. And then we'll need to draw into more instant speed answers, most likely. Just a 4 mana chariot, still pretty good. There's the abrade, can destroy the chariot itself. So I don't think I need another magistrate. They could have fatal push, but for the most part our opponent's deck doesn't have much interaction. And then probably fine to get rid of showdown since it's kind of slow and we already have Ourobrask. So I really just want extra lands. Of course, Showdown can help find land 5. But um, I think keeping the Bone Crusher as just a creature to block the cats might be important. Alright, and then I'll play Savior. Sadly, no land, so we're still multiple turns away from getting the Ourobrask combo online. But the Abraid should help. Could also consider killing a cat with a stomp so they cannot crew chariot in the first place. Probably safer to just keep up a braid. And there's Grease Fang with another chariot in the graveyard. And a Stitcher Supplier. We could have also killed the Chariot last turn to let the Shaman attack to make treasure and get closer to Orbrask. But one or two played safe here. And then for now I guess block a cat token and uh, take six. And then maybe I have to attack with a shaman next turn just to make more mana. And even if they were to mill a can't stay away here with these suppliers, they wouldn't be able to cast it because of our Manchester. Right, land is good. So yeah, I guess we get to Orobrask engine online here. Attack with uh Shaman token, and then we have Selfless Savior to protect one of the creatures as well. Bone and triple blocks, I'll just trade for the cat if that's the case. And play Orobrask. Okay, so now our opponent's no longer drawing cards that they can cast. Just need to beat whatever they have in hand and on the board. 
It's going to be a Thought Seize, taking away a Braid most likely. So two unknowns in the opponent's hand. We should be able to beat a Chariot with Savior making Orbrask indestructible. Although once we untap with Reflection, I can copy Selfless Savior to make Orbrask indestructible, so that might be worth it. And then take four this turn. So we keep the Selfless Savior around. And then next turn I can play Bone Crusher as an extra blocker. Sure. On the off chance that our opponent does have something like a Fatal Push in hand. Now I guess they could also be stranded with a Parhelion that they'll eventually be able to cast, but hopefully we can uh, close out the game in the meantime. And a Wither Bloom command will uh, kill our self as savior here, fortunately. So if their last card's a Fatal Push, they can get out of the lock. It is not. Bank of Magistrates, okay. So I could play a Bank of Magistrate just to be safe, or I can play Bone Crusher, and then we can copy it with Reflection, and I don't need to take two of Sacred Foundry. Yeah, I guess that's better. So can't stay away, we'll stay away. And we don't need to worry about the flashback half. Opponent animates chariots. And I'm just gonna copy a bone crusher to trade for it. Okay. I think we can still handle the cat tokens. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Lock established against the Grease Fan combo. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Some early removal, double Urbrask. In case one of them gets answered, can still just provide a nice bit of card advantage. Just need to pick up a few lands along the way. So our opponent on a Valakut Awakening deck could point towards a uh, combo strategy. Alright, it looks like Jeskai, maybe a control deck. Hopefully Fable resolves. It does. Now the question is, do I discard one Aura Brask or do I hang on to both? And it looks like a Magma Opus deck. At least we don't need to worry about Mystic's Mastery in uh, Explorer, but could be a Torrential Gear Hulk deck. So I don't think Skyclave's going to be all that amazing. Probably hang on to a Braid as an answer to Gear Hulk. Can maybe even blow up their treasure token. It's going to be a Karn for now. Okay. So that will make it so I can't use the treasures for mana. But we can just exile it with Apparition, I guess. So, I'm not sure what to discard to Fable, if anything. We'll see what Karn gets. Glass Casket, an answer to my Shaman token. And Sarah Paragon's not bad either. Maybe one Orbrask can go. Although with the mana from the Shaman, honestly fine to keep both. And then I think I stick to the plan of Skyclave, exiling Karn. I will be better prepared next time. And pass. Cataracts could point towards Wildfire being in their deck. As another Karn shows up. So now I will need 
another land to play Orobrask since the treasures won't work. Although I guess we can just attack Karn. Cataclysmic Gearhawk, okay. That's a board wipe. So I won't be able to really stop it. So I guess just kill Karn and uh, pass. So the Gear Hulk lets us keep an enchantment, a creature, and an artifact. So we don't actually lose all that much. And then a braid can deal with the uh, Gear Hulk. Casket deals with Apparition, opponent gets the token. Now I couldn't blow up the casket, but we can't exile the token, so that doesn't really help. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I'll just copy the Shaman attack. And then I can finish off the 4-4 with an Abrade. And then question is whether I attack with a real Shaman. That's probably okay. And then I can still Abrade and play Orbrask. And then we can keep Orbrask as the creature and Reflection as the enchantment. Brask resolves. And we'll see what's next. Another awakening. So we don't know if they still have the Gear Hulk, but I assume they do. And Supreme Verdict, I guess, they'll cast here. Although, I guess they don't have double white. So they would need a land still. Alright, there it is. Back to square one. Hopefully just draw land and play another Orbrask. There we go. Smash for four. And then we still have Sarah Paragon to get back Fable eventually. And selling a Dragonfire, which doesn't do it by itself. Although we're getting close to the point where our opponent can hard cast an 8 mana magma opus, so that's scary. Strict Proctor, okay. And a Lotus Field, I see. So they can keep the Lotus Field in play. And the Dragonfire will go to waste here. Another Sarah Paragon and a land. So don't have a land to replay with a Paragon. But uh, it's probably okay to run it out here, tank with Orobrask, even though we could kill Proctor to prevent another burn spell from finishing off Orobrask. I think we'll be okay. So we'll smash. Bone and Trumps. And we'll see if they have a way to finish off Orobrask here, or if uh, we get to keep it. And then next turn maybe play Fable. Orobransk sticks around. The land they can play for free. Alright, let's see what the opponent's big finish is. They can cast Magma Opus, they might wait to tap our creatures down. Or they might want to kill Orobransk before I get an extra card from it. Alright, it's gonna be a Cataclysmic Gearhawk, which they still had. And then probably keep Orobrask. A braid can clear a path and Chandra can start ticking up. So we could play Chandra first, stick up for mana, play a braid, or I can just plus exiling the top card to deal two damage. And then still a braid. But on the off chance I exile on a braid, I guess. Plossing first makes sense. It's my turn. Oh, this 
found another Orbrask, so that's two damage. And destroy an artifact. And attack for four. And then Den plus Chandra are both potentially lethal. So we're looking good. And there's the Magma Opus to the rescue. Okay. Well, at least they can't kill Chandra and Urbrask here. And they're forced to cast it now, so they can't wait to tap something down. So Magma Opus. Chandra at one. And our opponent explodes, or Brask providing a ton of value onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has most of the pieces we need. Eventually we'll need an Orbrask, but I'll try it, facing Yurion as companion. And then Savior can protect our Magistrate. Magistrate would have been better with the old companion rules, where it would prevent the opponent from casting Yurion in the first place. Nowadays it works a bit differently. So turn 3 Fable coming up. And then we'll probably find discarding an Apparition. Ooh, a temporary lockdown. Yeah, I guess we want to sacrifice Savior or I can just use Apparition to get all my stuff back, except for the token, of course. So we'll let uh, Savior go. Otherwise, sacrificing it would mean we get it back with a uh, Sarah Paragon, potentially. Alright, so... Iganja doesn't really help me here. So that can probably go. Then the question is... Apparition versus Fable. I don't need to Apparition the Lockdown now, necessarily. Could just play another Fable. Chandra's not bad either. But yeah, we know we can play Apparition at any point to get Magistrate and Savior back. And that would be nice to play Chandra to start applying pressure. Blood Mage likely to draw. And Spellbinder could have a look. Probably okay to get rid of one Chandra. Since I wouldn't mind finding Ourobrask or an extra land. And uh, yeah, I think attack, trade, potentially play Chandra is fine. And then if Reflection sticks around, I can maybe copy the Spellbinder. Sadly, Orbrask, I wouldn't be able to play here. Still good for two damage. Trial deals with Reflection. And another Savior. Okay, so... If I make mana with Chandra, could play Savior plus Spellbinder. Yep. You're going down. And see what's up. So yeah, this is an Enigmatic Incarnation deck. Fires of Invention, also pretty good. Pretty sure our opponent can cast the Incarnation for free if they play a Fires. And they just uh, got their red mana online. So probably Exile Fires. Since otherwise getting rid of Incarnation doesn't accomplish much. And play Savior. So the ley line they were kind of hoping to have in their opening hands to then have him play and maybe get a five mana creature right away with incarnation. They can still sacrifice Trial of Ambition, get a three drop. Although if it's something like uh, Knight of Autumn trying to take out Reflection, we can protect it with Savior. And then next turn we can potentially even copy our Skyclave. 
All right, opponents go to Skyclave for Chandra instead. Also makes sense. I don't need this. And a showdown. Still no land, unfortunately. So I won't be able to play Skyclave and copy with Reflection. So in that case, opponents not close to casting Titan. So we can exile the Gloom Shrieker. Other opponents probably just playing Fires next turn. So just casting the Skyclave might still be the better plan. And uh, then I can attack with Reflection, protect it with the Savior. So we'll start there. And then Skyclave goes after Incarnation first. Although we could also unlock our uh, Magistrates so they won't be able to cast the Fires in the first place. Maybe that's even better actually. And then Incarnation could still get a 4-drop by sacrificing Gloom Shrieker. What 4-drop could they get is a question. Let's find out. And then now copying Spellbinder with Magistrate in play is going to be much more effective. Okay, there's a second green, so they're close to playing Titan now. So there's going to be a Gloom Shrieker. Get back her removal spell. And we'll see what they go for. Either Manchester or Reflection would make sense. And then they can still get a 4-drop. And a Sarah Paragon will have to exile with Apparition. And there's Urabrask, although still stuck on 3 lands, so... Exile Paragon and smash. And our opponent concedes. Awesome, so just enough disruption here to keep the opponent from going off onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. No two drop, missing magistrate, but a good deal of interaction at least up against an Esper deck. And the Modern Age, okay, so maybe there's some Graveyard Synergy here, could be a Reanimator deck. For now, hit for one. And next turn we can have a look with Spellbinder. Otherworldly Gaze discarded as well. And now a Thoughtseize probably goes for Spellbinder. Okay, so a Skyclave Exile Modern Age will be our play. And then we're still on track to potentially get the combo online on turn 5 if we draw Manchester next turn. No scary creatures in the graveyard to worry about. Opponent casting a Gaze instead of flashing one back is interesting. Mills over Thoughtseize. And another Gaze, alright. Is your opponent going to cast a 1 mana Tolarian Terror here? Could be the case. Alright, I guess can't stay away points towards uh, Grease Fang Parhelion. And our opponent probably has a Grease Fang in hand, but uh, luckily for us no Parhelion in the graveyard. And there's Magistrate, okay. Well. We've got a savior to protect it, so... The one potential issue here is... Okay, Tyrant Scorn. Scorn will force us to sacrifice savior, otherwise... They would just ambush the uh, savior anyways. Our opponent also can't flash back any of their gazes because of our Magistrate. Play Orbrask and Smash. Alright, sadly, another Tyrant Scorn. Okay. 
So no lock, but we're still attacking for six. And hopefully exile a card here that's relevant. Tyrant Scorn. Yeah, opponent explodes, so they would have been forced to kill the apparition. Opponent didn't like that. And Ourobrask wins another game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. No sign of the combo, but a fine controlling hand that can try and leverage Chandra. There's Urbrask. Okay. Did not mean to take two. Misclick there. Opponent considers off blue white, so is this another Grease Fang deck? Looks like it's a Ledger Shredder we can kill at least. Well, it's a braided now, even though a braid would be an instant speed answer to Grease Fang. Yeah, maybe that is a reason to wait on uh, a braid. And then just go for Skyclave, Exile Shredder next turn, maybe. Alright, Rafine. I guess uh, we could also eventually exile with Apparition. That resolves. For now, Skyclave, exile Ledger Shredder. Thoughtseize probably goes for Apparition or Chandra. Maybe a Braid if they're afraid of us uh, killing Grease Fang at instant speed. But takes Apparition, so we won't be able to take out Rafine as easily. They do need to discard a non-land if they want to grow it. And the Gaze hits the Graveyard. And now a Kaito as well. That one we can maybe stomp with uh, Bone Crusher at some point. So now I could play Chandra, although she'll be under pressure from Rafine. So I might be better off just going play the Bone Crusher as a 4-3, play Tap to Den, next turn slam down Ourobrask. And hope they can set up the uh, Parhelion here. Another Shredder. And discarding a Faithful Mending this time. So lots of value from the looting effects. Kaito okay, so just draws. Alright. So if I were to play Ourobrask, attack with all at Kaito, then we're pretty likely to take it out. I think I prefer that over Chandra, try and kill Ledger Shredder, and run into Fatal Push with Revolt enabled now. Of course they could still chum block and then use a Revolted Fatal Push, but that will be after we kill Kaito. So Kaito down. I'm hungry. Gonna get a snack. And there's a fatal push to get a 2-2 two -two token back. Ourobrask exiling their top card. And hopefully it's a spell. Alright, Faithful Mending. So that one they'll be forced to cast if it doesn't want to go to waste. And our opponent goes for it. So Ourobrask kind of forcing the opponent to play in a weird way. Uh-oh. They discarded Parhelion. Luckily for us, there's no Grease Fang in sight. And yeah, the two damage I took for no reason at the start of the game could come back to bite me. As we fall to six. Can play the land from exile, or probably better is to play Chandra and keep up a braid. 
which the opponent does know about. Can use Chandra to kill the illusion after we attack. And then keep a braid for a potential Grease Fang. I knew you needed my help. And then next turn we could maybe attack with Dan as well to finish them off. Chandra can deal too. So we have options. It's going to be a Tainted Indulgence just to draw two. Opponent can gain life with Faithful Mending up to 12. But we would still potentially be able to kill them with a den. So if Rafine is forced to stay back, that plays into our Ourobraska game plan a little bit more. And yeah, Rafine's gonna chill. Find a fable we can play. And then Chandra probably just deals two damage here, since I don't need the mana. But we'll see what else we exile. Maybe a Magistrate would be nice. Be it's going to be in a braid. Doesn't really help me with Rafine at 7 toughness. Unless we want to attack into it. Double a braid. But then for opponents holding a Grease Fang, we get owned. I'll just play Fable and a tap Sacred Foundry should do. Opponent can flashback gaze. Okay, they kept the card on top, so that's scary. Could be a thought cease to clear path for Grease Fang. There's Grease Fang, so they might just have two of them here. So, what does that mean? I guess I can just destroy Parhelion with a braid. Because if I kill Grease Fang now, opponent still has a chance to play another one, and then I'm dead. If I uh, wait for them to bring back Parhelion, of course we could kill Grease Fang then, but they can still crew with Rafine and kill me. So I think the only option is to just destroy the uh, Parhelion itself. Because, yeah, Grease Fang triggers beginning of combat. So we'd have to kill Grease Fang in the main phase still, which does give them priority back to uh, play another Grease Fang. So we'll kill Parhelion now. Opponent goes for Mending. And then we have to kill our opponent on this following turn. Otherwise, we just die. And yeah, opponent discarded another Grease Fang. So Rafine is going to have to be staying back here. Ooh, fatal push. That's too bad. Opponent does fall to 10 from it. A braid. I guess a braid kills Grease Fang, so we're safe again. I can discard two lands since I can still animate Den and the braid if I want to. Okay, finds another Bone Crusher. So yeah, if I were to animate then attack with all, they block Urobrask, take 6, plus 2 from Chandra, um, plus 2 from Stomp, I guess would do it. And we have the mana to do it all. Alright, I guess that also works. Just double check here, opponent blocks, takes 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, otherwise killing Grease Fang might have worked out too. So yeah, ended up being a very close game here against uh, Asper Greasefang, but Urbrask put in a ton of work. Opponent actually blocking the den, but that's not gonna change things. Oh! Today's my lucky day. I did not mean to plus for mana. The misclicks continue. I guess we're gonna keep a suspense in this game. Kill Greasefang. Alright. 
opponent gets another top deck, luckily just a land. And our opponent may have disconnected as well. Alright, find a Spellbinder. And Chandra can finally do the honors here. Okay. Well, we found a Magistrate. We could lock our opponent out of the game. But uh, fine, we'll just win this way. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Magistrate into Spellbinder can exile something for good. Up against what looks like Angel Life Gain. Okay, let's uh, play this tapped. So Chandra dealing four is important to kill Valkyrie. Would love to find Skyclave Apparition as well. And I might have to kill Jada before it does too much damage. And then wait on Magistrate for a little bit longer. Next turn, probably still Spellbinder over Fable, but that's a close call. Maybe depends whether we find a land or not for Chandra. For now an Innkeeper. So Spellbinder can maybe exile a Collected Company to delay that, and the land is good. Spellbinder. And double Skyclave plus Resplendence. So, opponent has quite a bit of interaction. We have double Magistrate, however. Resplendent I can kill with Chandra. So I guess Skyclave for now. Opponent plays Resplendence. And then are we okay just using Chandra here to kill a Resplendent Angel? And do I want to trade for Innkeeper? I think I keep Spellbinder around since we can maybe eventually copy it with Reflection too. And then if I just play Fable this turn, our opponent likely goes for Apparition Exile Spellbinder so they can attack with Angel. And then on the following turn, Chandra kills Angel and we'll have a 2-2 to protect Chandra in addition to maybe a Magistrate. So I think that lines up better. And I don't think we're at immediate risk of Resplendent making tokens, since it's 6 mana to activate it. Alright, there's Skyclave. And they do actually go for the uh, Fable. Alright, I thought they would exile Spellbinder. Fair enough. So now, how does it change my play? If I double Manchester it next turn, I do give them the chance of activating Resplendent Angel if they draw land, which is bad. So I guess just Chandra kill Resplendent. And if they want to play a 5 mana apparition, they can. So we kind of give up on the Manchester value a little bit. And uh, I guess I could attack with the Shaman and still play Magistrate. I guess it works. I will keep Spellbinder back to protect Chandra. Okay. Now we are out of removal at the moment, so that could be scary if they top deck another Resplendent or Valkyrie or a Collected Company. Okay. Valkyrie plus Overseer, that's bad. As our opponent's gonna pump the team here. So we desperately need another Skyclave Apparition. Chandra down. Probably not worth saving here. Could double block the Apparition and then play another Magistrate. Get a 3-3 token in return. Although Spellbinder can maybe trade for the Overseer in the air, which we have a harder time stabilizing than the ground. We're done here. There's Urbrask, so lock established. Problem is we're behind on board. But uh, we'll start here. And then if we just get rid of Valkyrie, we're good, but... 
We need Skyclay for that. And our opponent also still has an unknown card in hand. That could maybe save them. And it was another company. Yeah. Finding double Valkyrie. GG's. Well, we established a lock, but uh, wasn't quite good enough here. Okay, so good to see our Orobrask prison deck in action. And yeah, as you can see, it's not like you get the two-card combo online in every single game. For the most part, we're just kind of playing a value game with good quality creatures. And occasionally we get some cool synergies like the Manchester Red plus Spellbinder or Manchester Red plus Orobrask to take over the game. And uh, yeah, lots of Grease Fang combo decks on the ladder right now, as you could tell. And if you want to improve those matchups, I recommend adding Unlicensed Hearse to the deck as a way to repeatedly exile the opponent's graveyard. And as an artifact, it's also pretty tricky for those decks to interact with. I had it in the deck for a while, but ended up cutting it after facing too many Angel decks, where the Hearse doesn't do much in favor of more removal. But as you can see, of course, we ended up playing against a few Grease Fang decks here, so would not have minded access to the Hearse. But yeah, for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.